ain't a cow dog. That's a horror dog, Charlie. That's my dog. Don't embarrass him. So you got yourself another orphan there, huh? Looks to me like I got myself a bunch of bankers. What do you mean by that? It means get to work. Yeah. Breakfast is cold. You could have let Brian play nursemaid. I had to get that calf started. Are we going to talk about it or not? What am I supposed to say? I'm your wife. It was a hell of a place. You're never going to get out of it alive. My best stuff. If this is good enough for celebration, don't you think? Hmm? I'm even going to pay back your family. Ton père est en train de mourir. Your father is dying. I heard you. Charles, it has been 15 years. If there was ever a reason to go back, I think it is now. I can look at you. I thought I'd never see you again. Yeah. Well, I'm here. Yes, you are. All right. Now let's get you out to the ranch. How's Dad? He's waiting at home. Is he in bed? No. It hasn't got to that. Not yet. It's just that I wanted you here, you see? They say it could be any time now. We can't be sure. He doesn't want anyone to know about this. Okay, Mom. I understand. Brian. Brian drove me that long ride to town. It isn't as easy for me as it used to be. How are you? Just fine. It's been a long time. He says. Well, uh, is that all your stuff there? Yeah. Excuse me. He's been real help to us.
you all hey, outlaw? What? How'd you get back in the country? Hello, Homer. <laughs> you still got it. Yeah. <laughs> Dad. Hello, Johnny. I'm glad to be back. You look in good health. You look just fine. Charlie Jr., this Abner, he's new since you left. Heard about you. Oh, I bet. You want me to take his bags in? I'll get it. Abner had no call to be rude. That's just his way. I'll get some more welding rods from the barn. Charlie, now you can spare a minute to visit. I made some fresh ice cream, your favorite. I don't expect this is any easier for you than it is for me. Probably not. <laughs> Fifteen years. I'm still ashamed. Ashamed? Hey. Of what? FBI man comes to my house in the dead of night. Charlie, that was years ago. Was I hiding him, he asked me. <laughs> hiding you? I didn't hide. When you... I walked away, big as day. When you called me from Paris, I told you, you break the law, don't come running back to me. Yeah, that's about the last place. You cut and run. in thing in Paris right now. It's the in thing here, too. Here. Here. Oh, no. Come on. <laughs> What's this? Scotch. If I read between the lines of Adrienne's letters, you drink too much. Oh, Mom, I'm 38 years old. Quit acting like my mother. I am your mother. It's for Dad. What's his favorite brand? The whole world's getting over Vietnam. Why the hell can't he? You need to give your father some time. I thought that's what we were short of. That's great, Mom. Tyson. So you built a new barn? Yeah. Homer's still trying to keep that old tractor going, huh? Oh, yeah. How's beef? Yeah. Yep. 
Santé. Yeah. We're going to eat just now. Grace, Charlie. God, we thank you for your bounty and for the freedom we all enjoy and for the men who paid for it. Amen. Dear, would you please cut the roast? Look, in World War II, I had buddies who died so we could all sit here and eat supper. I had buddies who just died. I didn't come 6,000 miles to talk politics. What did he come for? To be with you. I am not a charity case. Fine. Look, I figured to be dead inside of six months, but before you get all choked up... Don't worry, I've got a ticket that says I'm gone inside of three weeks. Please. Will you two stop this? You can't hate each other so much. Hate you? I don't know you. When you were that high, I taught you. If there's any quit in you, you can't ranch. You, you can't live. I don't know what that boy grew into. Your son. I've got no son. You mean to tell me if he's chasing a wild steer? Out in the back of the yard, you know, one of the big horned monsters that had a couple of years to go crazy. Yeah! I count on someone like Charlie Jr. to rope heels. Why don't you lay off him? President Carter Park and all them boys. Don't be crap. A leopard don't change his spots. Brian says Charlie Jr.'s a traitor, so I figure he is. Hold on. You got decorated Silver Star, for God's sake. Yeah, with white feather for high tailing it. That's what I call a traitor. You went AWOL. Absent without leave when he was on R&R. &R. Well, that ain't good, but that don't make him a traitor. A traitor somebody who helps the enemy. What does a deserter do? Hell or all traitors. Ain't that right, Brian? I'm going to talk to you. Got some extra hands for the roundup. <laughs> Abner, you jabber too dang much. I'm going to town tomorrow and put my ear to the ground see who's available. Don't want any drugstore cowboys. Nope. When do we want to start? End of the week. Same wages before, 35 a day and foul. I'll be broke by summer. <laughs> you always say that, Charlie. Ever tell you about my granddad? Built this place? What happened in the winter of odd eight? Only about a hundred times. My dad, how he fought to hang on, the drought in 33. Well, just about as many. They gave me a gift, Brian. I always figured I'd add on to it some way. Well, Charlie, you electrified the boreholes, you put in all that fencing, brought in that fancy accountant last year. <laughs> and roll over in their grave. I wonder lately if it's worthwhile. Of course it is. Man's got to have a legacy. Something he can pass on. You understand what I'm telling you? Yes, sir, I think I do.
Joe Harris. <laughs> oh, look at you. You look just fine. Charlie Jr. <laughs> Oh, come on, sit down. <laughs> Just tell me what you're going to have. Well, how about a couple of drinks? And champagne for the house, you name it. I'm on duty here. Well, listen, we got to talk. What have you been up to? Oh, I've been up to this, Matt. <laughs> Did you get married again? You got more kids? My daughter's up there at the JC. Oh, she can't be that old. Charlie. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> Well, she would be that old, wouldn't yeah, I'm she? I'm afraid so. What about marriage? Marriage? It's like divorce, huh? Just a piece of paper. How about you? Yeah. Well, good to have you back. Now, come on and sit down and tell no, me no, what no, you're no, going to have. No, no, I want to talk to you. I, I can't. Okay, I'll tell you what. Bring me the City Cafe's famous double chili cheeseburger, whole onions, and a beer. I'm going to stay right over here until your shift's over. Bottle or can? Well, you choose, madam. Bottle always sounds better when you check it out the window. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. I'll give him nothing. That's what's on the menu for yellow bellies. All right, fine. Then I'm gonna walk right out of here. And in exactly 22 minutes, you're gonna be dealing with a tour bus full of people who've been ripped off the Gila Monster Farm. Oh, hell. Couple of beers. All right, look at this. I forgot what great atmosphere this place has. You must be kidding. No, this is the real McCoy. Welcome to NRA, red-blooded Americana. <laughs> is that good? Well, it's home. I'll drink to that. Mm-mm. Super fast film. I hate flash cubes. Always makes my eyes look so ratty. Hey, Brian. All right, all right. How you doing? What brings you to town? I'll gather some cattle. Need a few more hands. I could throw in. You might even enjoy it. Do you know Nell Harris? Yes, I do. Excuse me, I'm gonna go late. Hello, Nell. I remember when we were about ten, rolling knees in your father's tool shed. We nearly burned the place down. He almost had a coronary chasing us. Don't know how he called me. Well, Brian, you were never known for being quick. Hey, who was that scrappy tight end we used to have? Carson Car Carter. Lester M. Lester M. Carter. He was something. Too bad he wasn't bigger. He could have gone on to the pros. What are you talking about? Football. I'm talking about football. Mr. Carter got killed fighting the gooks you were supposed to be fighting. My daddy would have caught you too if his leg hadn't been shot up in Iwo Jima. Should have never come back. But I did. When are you going back? Don't push it, Brian. Some of us stayed, CJ. And we didn't get no damn medals for it either. But not you, good buddy. Not you. Fine, good buddy. I'm not gonna fight you on this. You don't deserve your daddy. Honest to God, you really don't. Okay. 
You're right. The atmosphere in this place stinks. Want some cookie? sitting around my cafe all afternoon. So? Well, in my war, they'd have shot a fellow like that. So what did he ever do to you? <laughs> well, in there now. You hear that one noon? Sounds to me like he thinks old Charlie McCloud's boy is a prodigal son. Come home. Give me another beer. over there in France. Yeah. Better than America? No. So, what took you so long to come back? Well, you leave like I did. You don't expect the brass band to welcome you home. Took a big chance coming home, Charlie. They don't seem to care anymore. It's crazy. The whole damn thing was crazy. You're probably the only one in this town who could understand. I couldn't do it anymore. Charlie, what happened over there? I don't want to talk about it. You know those protesters I saw on the TV? I mean, they... They said they were against the war. But then why were they cheering for that ho-ho fella? Maybe they felt they had to. They were Americans. And they were for the other side. I don't know. I never agreed with that, Charlie. Never. on government range has got to be rebid in two years. I see old Ray Allen Swenson's giving this land his greedy eye. You know, beef prices may be up now, but take at least two years to pay off the debt we got piled up. Who knows if prices will hold? <laughs> One third of the cow and calf operations in this state are going belly up. Ranching is no business at all if you want, you to, want make to make any make money, money in this, in this life. life. <laughs> you sound just like your father. I'll come to bed, Charlie. You know, Brian's got a little cash. Sold it away. Brian? You could sell your share to him. He could pay you off regular every month. The land to Brian. This ranch is everything I stand for. I, I can't throw it away on Charlie Jr. Well, you can't disown our son. I heard the boys talking about him. It's starting all over again. You can't still be that angry. You've got to let go. I have. You get 75% of the outfit. Brian Winone gets the rest. Glad to have you back. Thanks for helping out. Yeah, glad to do it, Charlie. You helped me last year. Morning. Good morning.
eat something. Come on, Mike. thinking of giving part ownership of the ranch to Brian Wanoon. Well, I would just about ice the cake. He doesn't know what else to do. I can't help him. You're as prideful as he is. I'm not a rancher, so it doesn't matter. It does matter. This land has been in the McLeod family for three generations. It's all he has to give you. You asked me to come home. So I did. What else do you want me to do? You came home because I asked you to. Huh. I thought you came home because your father was dying. I know, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? No. I don't think you know what you mean. When you figure it out, go tell your father. I think he'd like to hear it. Now, for a peacemaker, you got a hell of a style. Stay put. I'll get you something. Won't get you in any trouble. Oh, that's okay. I'm not a side settler. You just uh, point one out. I'm gonna catch him. Got gotcha. you. Oh, 
Nice thing about a horse. There are no metal parts when you get into a wreck. Leave him alone, partner, and get another. Come on, boys. The boss wants to know why he ain't saddled up. Come on, let's hook him. Warren, come on. We ought to be 10 miles from here in a long trot. Come on. Well, now. Well, you can use some practice, partner.
all our will. Look out! Keep for tonight. I'd be better off going home. I'd be better off right here. Laura, there'll come a time when you'll need to be with him, but this isn't it. He's just lost consciousness. He's fallen off horses before. Not very often. I want to stay please, with him. Please, please. By morning, he'll be hollering for his boots. Go home. Get some sleep. He's dying. I can't believe it. Quoi tu peux venir? Oui? Et amène René avec toi. D'accord? Ciao. She's coming. I asked her to bring René. Yes, good. Now you go home. I'm staying here. Sure.
Pedro, acho. Tá. This is my wife, Adrienne. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. McLeod. Oh, please, you, you don't have to call me. Mrs. René. Mais il est vraiment cowboy. <laughs> What's he say? He wants to know if you really are a cowboy. Oh, tell him I'm his grandpa. Embrasse ton grand-père. <laughs> Little guy. They grow out of it. Oh, maman. Adrienne. Well, you don't have to tell me who this is. Adrienne, this uh, here's my... Uh... Brian. You should call me Brian, ma'am. And you must be... René. Oh, hold on now. That kid, René. Fastest draw in France. <laughs> I get your bag, ma'am. Thank you. Come say hi to your grandma. Oh. You fooled me, Hoss. Never thought you had a wife on ice as pretty as that. That's when I was in rodeo right after the war. That's Bobby Brennan there. He was the best bulldog around the circuit. Ended up in the movies. Making westerns. He knew Randolph Scott personally. Now, there was... One night I found Bobby stretched out flat on the floor in the lobby of the Pagosa Springs Hotel. He was clawing at the carpet and moaning, I'm having a heart attack. I got all excited. I was going to run for the doctor. No, no, he says, I have him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I noticed the empty bottle of old overhaul rolled under the settee behind him. <laughs> Mon grand-père a fait la résistance. What does he say? He said his grandfather in France was part of the resistance. Oh, yeah, well, you tell him I was in France, too. You did tell her. Vous étiez là? Ah, oh, you are there? Yeah, I, I was in tanks. <laughs> Didn't see much besides iron and mud. Comment? Kept my head down all the way from Normandy to the Elbe. Tell him I was scared the whole time. You did, il a eu peur. But you are hero, no? No. I got a tiny little medal that didn't mean anything. Come on, Dad. Bronze Star. World War II, the last good war. It must have meant something. No war is good. Really? Well, if you believe that, why are you on my case about Vietnam? Hey, why don't you take this in the dining room and look at it, little bitches? Look, I know you're smarter than I am, but we're all of us ignorant just on different subjects, and one of the subjects I am not ignorant on is war. Then you know why I left? No. I just know why I stayed. My country, right or wrong, is that it? I guess that's about it. Well, that was your war. Mine was different. That's what they keep saying. Why don't you listen to them? Laura! Who were those people in California when we went to that cattleman's convention? The Pachecos. Yeah. We went to this Catholic church. What's that got to do with 55,000 dead Americans? I'm just trying to tell you it wasn't all for nothing. We went in this church and there were all these Asians, little kids and old grandmas filing up to the altar. All those poor boat people. They were alive because we went to Vietnam. They were the lucky few who managed to get out. The people hated us. Our own government even backed out. 
It's the by God truth. They never should have sent you if they didn't intend to finish the job. You sent us. You were the government. Renee, there's a book in the bottom drawer of the bureau in my bedroom. A big blue book. Va chercher le livre bleu dans son bureau. So that part is good. We love each other and René very much. And now that his photos are selling, things are much easier. He wasn't selling his photos? You never wrote me about that. Well, things were very hard after René was born. Yes, I felt it when I visited that winter. That winter and several more. But now it is better. Except for... Charlie. Call him Charlie. Everybody does. Charles calls him dad. Except when he's being serious, he calls him my father. They're very alike, no? The apple didn't fall too far from the tree. Charles Jr., he talks about his father, does he? Yes, why not? You know, he loves his father very much. Yes, I know. Then whose policy is it? Well, there's something I want to show you. Where's that? Damn book, Renee! Dad, calm down. I'll get it. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? Papa, regarde. Like that, huh? Como? Righty. Cool boys? <laughs> yeah, that's close enough. You know how to whistle, don't you? Como? Well, like this. Go on. Well, never mind. You're the carrot man, then. Carrot? Muy bien. You're getting it, partner. Come on. Now, this is a saddle. You got that? Tu vas me laisser saddle? Yeah, that's, that's right. See, this is the cinch, the stirrup, fenders, skirts, pommel, candle. Grand-père, attends, je peux monter tout seul? No. I want, want to yahoo? Exactamente, partner. That's the whole idea. All set. Go ahead. Yahoo! Oh, gotta do better than that. Tia! This here is a hot dog. It's a wiener. It's a kind of sausage. Here, you take a bite out of that, you'll start talking American. How's that? C'est bon. <laughs> yeah, you bet it's bon. <laughs> you look over there, you can see the Pacific Ocean. And look real hard back there. That way, you can just make out the Atlantic. On a clear day, you can see France. Uh -huh. For sure. It's 
Tu me fais un Non, je ne pense pas. Tu ne crois pas I declare, you must be a real McLeod. It's a fool in you, that's for sure. Give me a bite. Warm, Brian. Okay. What brings you here sober and orderly? Kenny, what do you know about desertion? Charlie's kid? Well, it was a long time ago. And didn't President Carter pardon those draft dodgers? CJ was no draft dodgers in uniform. <laughs> so was I. I joined a National Guard unit to make sure I'd never see far. <laughs> Charlie Jr. went AWOL on active duty. Now, did Jimmy Carter mean to let them boys off the hook? Now, don't just sit up there like a passenger. You make him do what you want him to do. Keep your elbows in. I do. Yeah. All right, now, what do you do when you finish your ride? Make the earth not hot. <laughs> That's it. Pull off the saddle, curry him down, give him some water and a flake of hay. All right, cowboy. He's all yours. He'll do. He's a good boy. Yeah, I believe it. No. I called you a quitter that time, but when I saw you up in that hammer-headed wrong, <laughs> bulkiest piece of horse flesh I ever owned. I thought if anybody could ride him, maybe you could do it. Disappointed you again, huh? I'm sorry. <clears throat> that was uncalled for. Charlie, tell me, please, why'd you do it? Why'd you run away? You think I was scared, don't you? Well, yes, I know I was. And to fire any man isn't scared is a damn fool. But you stay for your buddies. For your buddies. I had a buddy. His name was Franklin. He was a big Oki. I liked him a lot. And I stayed for him. We'd been ordered to take this village on the edge of the jungle. We'd been hammering away for hours. And Charlie finally just picked up and left. And when we got in, there was nothing. There was no rice, there were no weapons. There was nothing. And Franklin and I and, and the CO were, were in this hooch when the first rocket hit. Franklin's arm was just blown off. And the CO was hurt pretty bad. Someone was screaming Charlie was coming out of the trees. I called in the choppers. I carried the CO out to the landing zone. And when I went back to get Franklin, there was a gook standing over him with a knife trying to cut off his boots. I emptied my clip into him so fast he started spinning. And when he dropped, we 
when he dropped, I saw it was a woman. And under her arm in a sack, there was this... There was her baby. And I said to myself, God, please don't... Don't tell me I've killed a baby. There is no reason to kill a baby. And, and then his mouth started to open. I saw these bubbles started to come out. And they were covered with blood. And they just were coming out so fast like that um, kid's toy with the plastic thing. And Sweet Jesus. And the next day, our guys came back and took the village. And you know what? A week later, Charlie came back. And he took the same damn village. I was in a hole in the middle of nowhere with my best friend dying in my arms. For what? I was killing women and babies. For what? The thing was absurd. The whole damn thing was absurd. Charlie, you swore an oath. I swore an oath to my country. Not to what was going on over there. I didn't swear an oath to that. I didn't run away scared. I walked away. And don't think it's been easy to turn my back on my country. Because it's been a nightmare. And don't you think it hasn't been hell for me to go against you? Lie. 
could run. Responsibility. They are good shots. Do you think you will do anything with them? Maybe one of the magazines in Paris. Why, American in Paris down on the farm? We should get back, you know? Okay. Je sais bien. I don't know what I'm trying to prove here. Why do you have to prove anything? Why can't you just enjoy the time you have left together? Because he's not going to let me. He just keeps it hanging out there. It's like barbed wire between us. You have endured before. You will now. Look, Miss Bronco. He is tough like you. Come on, Charlie. Oh, no, no. Oh, be no, my no. girl. Boy. Come on, Charlie. Oh, that's it. Come on, Charlie. Yeah, yeah. Ah! No! No, 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 I've come to arrest Charles Wesley McLeod, Jr.
got no idea what it took to go against your old man. Not one time. Yeah, I know. A man might have gotten shot for arresting a McLeod. The FBI man in Cheyenne said they was through dealing with deserters. The U.S. Attorney's Office didn't know what to do with you. Finally got this AWOL apprehension team. Took them a day to call back if you were in their computer. I'm not even sure it's my jurisdiction. But you have this driving sense of civic duty, huh? Lucky me. Hold it tight. Not too loud, I got an angle. Boom! Brian. Yeah. You turned him in, didn't you? He's an offense, Charlie. Me, to you, to Daddy, God rest his soul. To every man who carried a rifle, no matter what godforsaken war they was in. Don't make me choose between you two any more than I already have. You, Charles W. McLeod, Jr., Specialist for U.S. Army? That's right. You might consider signing this. What is this? Enlisted out, Chapter 10, AR 635-200. You get to choose. I can take you back to the fort. I'll put you in the stockade for a couple of weeks while you wait your court-martial. You could probably fight it with a good lawyer. Or? You can fill out your name and your social security number and hereby voluntarily request discharge for the good of the service. You admit that you have broken the Uniform Code of Military Justice. You circle AWOL. I take it back to the CO. That gives us an administrative way of getting you out of our hair. What you get is an other than honorable discharge. There's no publicity, there's no trial. Are you coming in? I believe I'll take a little walk. You, uh, you get in. I could use a drink. How about you? I guess not. We'll be at the city cafe. It ain't right. Traitor, a slap on this fancy French wrist. And I ain't the only one in town that thinks so either. That's right. Hey, Charlie Jr. You know? How you doing? I'd like you to meet my wife, Sadriana. 
Snell. I'm pleased to meet you. I'm pleased to meet you, too. Uh, what can I get for you? How about a red wine and a beer? Jim? There ain't no tour bus today. So you tell them to drink up fast and get out. It's on the house. You ever feel like frog gigging? like to see your wife dance too, maybe? She doesn't dance. Well, I'd be honored. Uh, Ma'am, I really would. Ça ne me dérange pas, franchement. that I had with you are through All the days I spent not knowing what to do All the lonely nights I slept alone with you And she wants me She wants me She wants me Thinking it over, I found somebody new, and I'm not afraid of loving it anymore. And I know that there's no one for me this morning. I can give in and I can support you. And she wants me. She wants me. She wants me. That's enough. Hey, the song ain't through here. Hey, that's enough. Hey! But you uh, pacifist, you know, to live, to live to love, to live to fight. <laughs> Brian.
Lay another hand on him and I'll kill you. He's a damn deserter, Charlie. And you know it. summers when you were a kid, I thought, he, he's a good hand. You kept it up when you were grown. I'll give you that. You're a good hand. I almost gave you part of this outfit. That was damn foolish. Charlie, wait. That's more than fair severance there. I deserve better. So did I. Where you want this, Charlie? Just put it there. What are you doing? I'm taking advantage. You let me go, Charlie. Look <laughs> no, This isn't the time of the place. Well, when is? I guess there never is. <laughs> oh. Sometimes when you take in all this beauty, you think there always is. Remember that first spring when you... Went on the roundup. Hmm. What I remember is the first winter, that blizzard. You were just accustomed to that California weather. You got used to things pretty fast. I remember in that roundup, you said you'd do anything, <laughs> even ride drag. I never got used to it. Hmm? Barn's not 50 yards from the house. And everything was dead white just past the porch. And you stepped into the snow. Oh, I knew where the barn was. You disappeared. Like you were swallowed whole. I didn't think he'd come back. Well, I did. Huh. You know, before I said, yes, I'll marry you, I read about those ranchers who just up and disappeared in the snow. And then during the first thaw, they were found not 20 yards from the house. What a thing for a young bride to think. How could I not? I loved you so. Well, it was worth it. Yeah, it was. I'm not a bride anymore. Oh. You'll do. But you won't. I've never stood up to you before. You have too. Not about some important things. Things so important I was afraid of losing you. It's going to happen now anyway. So now I'm going to stand up. If you love someone, you risk an awful lot. You risk losing them. Or you risk losing your right to be proud and hurt. To love someone, you have to be able to forgive. I've been forgiving you for 15 years that I don't have my one son nearby. Now it's your turn. 
I don't know what to do. You don't do anything. You just wake up and die right, Charlie McLeod. I want to go home. If that is what you want, Charles, we will go home. Why? What do you want? I want no more anger, no more distance. We have to get back to our lives. We can't just camp here waiting for him to die. Don't leave it this way, please. May I come in? No. Your father wants to talk to you. About what? He wants to forgive you. Okay. But I haven't done anything wrong. Young man, unless you are the second coming of Christ, you've done something wrong. So you march out to that stable this instant. And on the way, get ready to forgive him. You walk him down by the corral for a minute. I'll be right with you. Mom said you wanted to speak to me. Dad, let's just agree to disagree. Oh, I'm tired of that. Charlie, why did you come back home? Mom thought there was a chance of peace between us. I know what your mother thought. Why'd you come back? Because you're going to die. And I needed to tell you that I love you. Maybe you should have left home. Lord, it comes and it goes. Don't bury me yet. 